We need a new system. We need a new society. We need to demand that which may have sounded impossible even a few weeks ago, but is not only realizable, but an imperative necessity. What does the Palestinian resistance say about the current war raging against the Palestinian people by the Israeli Defense Forces? Today we're talking to one of the leaders of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, PFLP. He is talking to us from Lebanon. Welcome to this week's episode of The Socialist Program. I'm your host, Brian Becker. Today we're talking with Haitham Abdo, he is a representative of the PFLP in Lebanon. Thank you so much for joining our show. Thanks for you. Hey, Tim, before we get started, I just want to frame this conversation. There is a mass movement uh, in the United States in opposition to the U.S. support for the Israeli genocidal campaign against the people of Gaza. The U.S. is deeply involved in this war. It funds the war. It arms the Israeli military. One of the major problems for people in the United States is that we don't get to hear from the representatives of the Palestinian side. And in fact, many of the organizations in the Palestinian resistance, including the most important ones, are labeled by the U.S. government as terrorist entities, as terrorist organizations. In fact, this is an official label uh, put on these organizations by the U.S. government. And as a result, it's almost a prohibition against talking to people from Palestine. That's why we wanted to talk to you, because you are a leader of one of the trends within the Palestinian resistance just before we get started, how do you respond to this allegation, this labeling, this characterization by the U.S. government that PFLP and the other resistance organizations are terrorist entities? When we talk about the terrorist, uh, we should know what is the definition of the terrorist. Uh, is the terrorist who one uh, defend on the ground? Is the terrorist uh, the one who? Uh, 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 make the battle for uh, our people. Is the terrorist who wipe uh, our land uh, and uh, carries out mass massacres and genocide? 1948, uh, the one who killed the children and the woman uh, in Gaza now, more than 27,000 of people uh, killed uh, in the past uh, four months. Who is the terrorist? Uh, the terrorist the Zionist occupation. The terrorist now is the one uh, who uh, support uh, this occupation, which is the imperialism, uh, which is the United States of America and the Western. This is the terrorist, and not our people, not our uh, part, our resistance. We, ha we have the right to resist, to return our uh, land. Haitham, as the war in Gaza continues more than four months, as you mentioned, more than 27,000 dead, many, many more wounded. So many people have had their homes destroyed or their homes damaged so that you have a refugee crisis, a humanitarian crisis, a crisis of hunger. Uh, this war goes on and on. What are the major demands that the resistance forces are making in order to have a long-term ceasefire agreement? What will it take for this agreement to be reached? First of all, we need uh, uh, to stop the aggression against our people. This is the first step, stop the aggression up, uh, up, uh, against our people. Second, left the siege and they bring in relief and in medical supply, all the necessary needs of our people in Gaza. Uh, also, we affirm that any attempt to circumvent the demand for the offensive cessation of aggression not meet the demands of our people and serve the occupation. What we need to break the siege on the Gaza Strip, the beginning to supply our people with the 
all necessities of, uh, of life while at the same time enabling us to rebuild uh, institution and infrastructure providing the supplies to reactivate and support the system which was about to collapse under the weight of the barbaric acts of the Zionist aggression and transfer, transferring serious cases of the wounded in the Gaza Strip to treatment abroad uh, in a brotherly and friendly country. Well, this is what we need as an initial thing. And uh, the second thing, after uh, this, after uh, stop the aggression, after, uh, uh, the occupation leave the Gaza Strip, then uh, uh, about the prisoners. Uh, they need to do three phases about the uh, uh, release of prisoners. Uh, and there is fire. We affirm that the first thing to seize the fire, then we can negotiate about the uh, prisoners. This is what we, uh, this is what we understand. Do you think that the Netanyahu government, very right-wing government, many characterize it as a fascist government, do you think the Netanyahu government and Netanyahu as an individual leader actually wants the war to end, or does he look to a longer war and perhaps a wider war, a regional war? I think uh, Netanyahu needs uh, to this this war to continue, this uh, this war to extend to all the region, uh, because uh, he he know well uh, after this war. Uh, the first day after the, the war end, he will go to the jail. Uh, because of this, he trying to extend this war. He trying to go uh, to the uh, other countries uh, like Lebanon, like Syria, like uh, uh, all the uh, these countries. But uh, he didn't uh, succeed uh, in this issue. Uh, he need uh, to to go far uh, through. Uh, assassination of the uh, resistance commander like uh, Al-Aruri and like the Iran co uh, uh, com uh, co uh, command in uh, Syria and uh, like uh, what did he do? Uh, he, he don't want, he did not want to stop this war. This is the reality. All the, all around the country, Haytham, when, when Joe Biden or Anthony Blinken go and speak, if they're speaking at a hall, if they're speaking on a university, people are disrupting their speeches and chanting, we demand a ceasefire, we demand a ceasefire. Uh, the Biden administration from the beginning embraced Netanyahu. I mean, he was hugging Netanyahu. I thought he was kissing Netanyahu. And he said, we are... We are with Israel, 100%, 100%. Here we are four months later, global public opinion has turned so demonstrably against Israel and against their patrons, against their sponsors in Washington. And yet, uh, so far, the Biden administration has not insisted on a ceasefire. What's your assessment of where the Biden administration or the U.S. government stands on this what are they hoping for? What are they looking for? Why are they taking the position that they've taken so far? I think if uh, Biden uh, need to stop uh, or to cease fire uh, in Gaza, he can do this uh, through an hour. But uh, he don't want to also to stop this war in Gaza. And on the other hand, he, do, he don't want to uh, extend this war uh, in all the region. He, he wants to continue uh, the aggression in Gaza, but on the other hand, he don't want to, uh, to extend war on the region. And uh, we saw that through the visits of uh, Blinken and the Hochstein to this area, uh, uh, what what he all what they want from Lebanon or from uh, Syria or from uh, the area uh, to not extend the war, but he didn't take to about uh, the to, uh, to stop the uh, the auto fire on the Gaza. 
this is what uh, Netanyahu uh, need and all the, and the American administration. The American administration, uh, they have a strategic uh, relation with uh, that. Uh, yes, they uh, have uh, some uh, problems with Netanyahu as an individual, but they don't have problems as, uh, as a uh, uh, base for the imperialism in our region. Because they, uh, the Israel uh, play a role for the imperialism in, uh, in, uh, for the imperialism in our region. Not only for the America, also for the Western. Because they, uh, we, uh, our, or they, uh, 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 they know that uh, Israel is, is for this uh, uh, in our region. Given its overwhelming military superiority, it has surprised, is, meaning Israel's overwhelming military superiority, it has surprised the world that the Israelis have accomplished so little militarily. In other words, they have succeeded in killing all of these civilians. Tens of thousands are dead, including so many children and their parents, their mothers. So many have been killed. So the Israelis are very successful at killing civilians. But so far, it seems to the world that it has not succeeded in spite of its military superiority in accomplishing its primary military objectives. How do you view that? Why is that? From the beginning of uh, this aggression on, uh, on the Gaza Strip, uh, the Zionist chain uh, uh, put uh, two uh, goals. Uh, the first one, uh, to return the prisoner. And the second thing, to end uh, Hamas or to end the resistance in the Gaza. After four months now from the, this aggression, what they achieve on the ground? Did they uh, return the prison? Did they end the Hamas or the resistance in the Gaza? Sure not. And will not uh, achieve this, uh, this goal uh, because uh, the resistance is all, the, all, all our people in Gaza is, uh, is a, a resistance. Uh, every, everyone on Gaza is a resistance. Uh, because he didn't uh, uh, recognize between uh, the one who resists and the civilian. He kills every everyone. He kills everything in, in Gaza Strip. Well, let me ask you then, on, in the same vein, the mass media in the United States portrays Hamas as the Palestinian resistance. In other words, Hamas and resistance, one and the same. There are, in fact, several resistance organizations, including your own, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Can you comment on the level of cooperation and coordination among the various resistance organizations? Sure, yani, yani, there is a truth in the ground. Yani, this is true that uh, in the first uh, Hours of the of this of the seven October, uh, the Hamas start this resistance. But uh, now, uh, from the second day of the this war, uh, all the uh, resistance uh, sharing and participating uh, on the ground in this uh, this war because this war is not against the Hamas. This war uh, is against all the Palestinian people. All the parties, all the resistance parties, BFLB, uh, Hamas, Jihad, and other, they uh, they uh, contribute uh, which each uh, which other on the ground uh, against this uh, occupation, against this uh, aggression. But uh, the, the the media in the West, in uh, the USA, and in the uh, says that uh, this uh, war against Hamas, against uh, terrorists. Uh, this is not uh, true. The true that this aggression against all the Palestinian people, not only in Gaza. We see what happened in uh, West Bank, and we see what happened in uh, the other uh, places. Every day, this uh, occupation killed, this occupation destroyed, this occupation uh, arrest. Uh, yani if we can t uh, see the, uh, since uh, 7 October, Till now, in West Bank, there are more than 6,300 uh, 
uh, prisoner, a new prisoner. This is uh, not against. Uh, this is against all the people. This is about, uh, against Palestinian people, and everyone in the Palestinian people now resist this aggression, resist this uh, Zionist occupation. Let's turn to another subject. Uh, the whole world recognizes that there is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza, huge crisis. Uh, people are displaced, they're wounded, there's no medicine, people are having amputations without anesthesia, uh, just terrible, terrible conditions. At the same time, the United States and some other major Western powers have announced that they are cutting all aid and funds to the UNRWA, the UN Relief Agency that has tens of thousands of employees in Gaza and has been a principal way that aid has been able to pro be provided for the people of Gaza for quite a number of years. Uh, the reason they're cutting the funds is that they've identified, or the Israelis actually said, that 12 employees of the relief agency out of tens of thousands of employees were actually uh, either members of Hamas or participants in October 7th. Given the fact that the funding is being cut for the UN relief agency, uh, what do you think its impact will be? I mean, let's have a realistic assessment of what its impact will be on the people in Gaza. I think uh, what they say uh, about uh, seven or 12 uh, members in Hamas or uh, shared uh, or participate on the 7th of October, this is not uh, really true. Uh, this is an, a political issue. We uh, remember when uh, Biden uh, uh, do the century deal, uh, first, one of the most important things that to end the honor war, because the honor or the UN nation uh, for the relief of uh, Palestinian uh, is the witness of the Palestinian refugee because the honor established uh, with the uh, 194 resolution, which means that yani, the, this, the, the honor remains till the return to the Palestine. This is the, the, the first thing. Now they want to end this, the, the UNRWA. And we and uh, Trump cut the budget of the UNRWA uh, when he was, in the, he was the president of the uh, USA. They, he, he cut uh, and he obliged uh, uh, other countries to, not, uh, get to, to, to do the same thing, to stop the donation for the UNRWA. I think this is the political issue. Uh, I think uh, this uh, political issue will affect uh, greatly on the Palestinian people because you know there are millions of Palestinian people uh, benefits from the UN services. Uh, to stop these services, what will uh, happen? What will happen? I think that will, that will, will be more, will be more uh, problems in the Middle East, not only in, uh, in uh, Palestine. Not only in Gaza, not only in West Bank, also in Lebanon, also in uh, other countries. All the Palestinian refugees will affect. Uh, they uh, make uh, discussions in the Congress uh, uh, since two or three years about the definition of the refugee. Who is the They want, they, they need the refugee, only the one who uh, born in Palestine in 48. And all the others that are not refugees. They, in all what they do is to end the main uh, issue, the main problem in the Palestinian issue, which is the refugee. This is the uh, this is the thing. They use the seven or twelve members in Hamas here, and they use something uh, other in another place to do what they want or what they uh, goal. Let's talk a little bit more about the West Bank. You mentioned the West Bank and what's going on there, but I want to I want to explore that a little bit more. You know, after the first intifada between 1987 and 1991, uh, 
there was an agreement by the United States or an acknowledgement that the that Gaza and the West Bank should be treated as one, as one central entity. Uh, and at that time, during the entire 1990s, the Israeli government kept sending more and more settlers, Israeli settlers, into the West Bank and also built the apartheid wall uh, to isolate Palestinian communities. And now we're hearing reports of extreme settler violence against Palestinian civilians in the West Bank. Can you talk a little bit uh, about what's going on in the West Bank? First of all, uh, uh, if we back to the uh, Oslo Agreement, you know, in, in 1993, uh, uh, and they uh, say in that time that uh, should uh, uh, and uh, it's a result of, uh, from this uh, agreement, uh, Palestinian state with uh, Gaza and uh, West Bank. But after uh, more than 30 years now, what happened in uh, Gaza? What happened in West, uh, West Bank? Uh, there are more than 850,000 settlers in West Bank. They are, as you mentioned, there is an apartheid wall. Uh, there are... Uh, Cut all the cities. There is uh, no continuity, uh, continuity in the ground between the cities uh, in West Bank. Uh, there are, uh, they enter uh, every day to the West Bank. They kill, they destroy, they uh, do what they do, what they want. And we saw yesterday when they entered to the hospital and killed it of uh, the Palestinian uh, in, the, in the hospital. The, 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 the Zionist uh, occupation don't want uh, an Indian state or Palestinian entity. And uh, it says this uh, clearly. Uh, uh, and also in the religion thing, uh, they call this area uh, Yehuda and Samira. And, you may, and uh, they, they mean that this is a, they, they, they mean in this uh, world, Yehuda and Samira, that this is ground for the uh, Zionists, for the Jewish, for the for them, they they will not uh, give uh, this uh, land for the Palestinian state. Uh, and what they say about the two states uh, is this, this this is failed. This is uh, there is a negotiation about this since uh, ten uh, ten of years or more years about this, what they uh, achieve on the ground. Nothing. They achieve more uh, uh, destroy prisoners, more, more massacres. They, this is in the ground what they happen. Uh, now, if we can talk uh, more, uh, since 7 October till now, uh, since four months, uh, more than 6,000 uh, prisoners, more than 300 uh, Palestinians killed in West Bank. Uh, uh, more than three or four thousand uh, NJ, uh, wounded in uh, West Bank. Uh, this is what happened. They, this, this is, they, they, they have the same uh, project for Gaza and for West Bank to remove the people. They want to get rid of the people uh, in Gaza to Jordan and in, uh, in, in Gaza to Sina and in West Bank to Jordan. They, what, this is what they, what they need. And we hear from a lot of uh, the ministers and the, the Netanyahu uh, minister uh, to talk about this. Sometimes they want to do uh, for human humanitarian need. Sometimes for the that they they uh, in Gaza now they are no life, uh, for, and uh, they want to open the door to the Palestinian to go out the, the Gaza uh, for the humanitarian uh, things. This is what they need. Let's talk about the stage that we are in for the Palestinian movement and from your point of view. Obviously, the Palestinian movement has gone through many different stages, different phases. The PLO, which was created in the in the 1960s as part of a rising tide of 
revolution. And then there was the 1967 Israeli war where the West Bank and Gaza and Golan Heights and parts of Egypt were seized. There was the 1973 war. There was the Camp David summit uh, that basically took Egypt out of the confrontation uh, with Israel on behalf of the Palestinians. There was the 1982 war in Lebanon, the Intifada. We have gone through so many different stages and phases of this very, very long struggle. And the struggle won't stop. As you said, it appears that it will be an enduring struggle, something that will continue. From your point of view, what is required to bring about the unification of the Palestinian resistance on both the national and on the political level? And uh, as you said, the, the Palestinian uh, issue uh, passes uh, since 1948, or before also, since 1929, uh, 1936, uh, then 1948, uh, 67, 73, uh, 78, uh, 82, and uh, 87, Antifada, the first Antifada, and 2000, the second Antifada, all digits. What, the, what they have? Each stage, the Palestinian become more uh, strong, become more more, uh, more uh, focus on rights. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we see what happened in uh, October 7. We see what happened in October 7. The October 7, not uh, starting, uh, start in 7, uh, October 7. The October 7 st uh, starts uh, uh, before 17 uh, years uh, when they uh, uh, make a siege on Gaza. They start uh, since 57 years when they in 7 October, it come in, in a process of uh, resistance, not uh, isolated from uh, the, the previous and uh, will not be isolated from the coming uh, actions uh, and coming uh, resistance. Uh, I think now, uh, uh, the, as, as a BFLB, uh, and we, we make an, an initiate uh, that to uh, build a unify, unifying uh, co command for all the uh, Palestinian parties in order to be responsible for the political and the uh, for the political uh, stage in, the, in, in, in this uh, re in this uh, uh, time because now we need all the Palestinian party to be uh, one hand to be unified. Uh, with their uh, struggles, with their resistance, because uh, this is only the one who will uh, win. Yani, uh, we need uh, unity in order to uh, make, after the war, to make the, uh, re rebuild the Gaza. We need uh, a unity in order to continue the resistance against this uh, Zionist occupied. The uh, unity in order to be strong against any uh, thing that will be uh, pushed again uh, for the Palestine. Uh, as you see, the United States uh, says a lot of things about the day after the war end. Uh, but if we are unified, we uh, will not uh, do anything. The one who decides what will uh, after. The first day after the end of this war, only the Palestinian and the resistance will decide what will uh, uh, what will happen after this uh, day. According to us, the uh, day after the end of this war will be the victory. Will be the one of the, uh, this war. This is what, what we and the BLO. We need to rebuild the BLO. Uh, uh, on the uh, uh, we need BLO to be, uh, to, to us to be a part from the BLO uh, uh, according uh, to the uh, resistant uh, according to the resistant not according to the negotiation this is what we need 
Let me ask you, since you are in Lebanon, uh, what is the state or what has been the impact of the war in Gaza on Palestinians living in refugee camps outside of Gaza, uh, and in particular inside of Lebanon? Has it, has it had a big impact? If so, how? Uh, first of all, uh, all the Palestinians in Gaza or in uh, Lebanon or in any other countries, the Palestinians, uh, one unity, one people. Uh, and also what happened in uh, Gaza sure affect uh, on Palestinians in Lebanon. The Palestinians in Lebanon, the Palestinian refugees in Lebanon, uh, shared uh, in this uh, war, shared in this resistance, in, uh, in, in uh, many things. Uh, in uh, military bases, uh, in uh, demonstration, on uh, media, on a lot of things. The, the, the Palestinian refugee in Lebanon are part of this uh, people. So they are part of, uh, of this resistance because uh, the Palestinians are uh, one unit uh, everywhere in the world. Let me ask you one final question. Um, since October 7th, as I mentioned in the beginning, millions of people outside of uh, Palestine have been in the streets demonstrating. In Washington, D.C. on November 4th, uh, we were part of a coalition that brought 500,000 people, one half million people, for the biggest demonstration ever in support of Palestine. Uh, on January 13th, there was another massive demonstration in Washington. Um, every day, every day there are big protests all over the United States. Nothing like this has ever existed before in support of Palestine. It's a brand new era, brand new. And it's not just in the United States, it's everywhere. I just want to know from your point of view as a Palestinian and part of a the resistance, uh, obviously the struggle is in the West Bank and it's in Gaza, it's in historic Palestine, it's in the refugee camps, but now it has this other global phenomena of mass protest in support of Palestine. Is it significant? Why is it significant? Do the Palestinian people know about it? Uh, I want to just get your view, because from our point of view, where we are, I'm in New York City, it seems like we've entered a new political era, but how does the Palestinian community in Palestine or in the region view this development politically? I think uh, uh, in uh, USA and in all the world uh, in general is very important. Why very important? Very important because... Uh, uh, the first time, the first time, first in, in uh, USA, uh, we saw this uh, massive uh, demonstration or uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this action. Uh, first, uh, f the first thing uh, that this uh, uh, massive uh, demonstration uh, give us the uh, strong, give us the uh, uh, and, and what, what I mean that the, the, now the Palestinian story in the world is the dominant. Before we say the, uh, the, the most uh, the, uh, the Zionist uh, story was the dominant in all the world. Now the Zionist and, and all the world uh, in, uh, as a uh, uh, popular uh, not on uh, government uh, government we talk about the, the pop, uh, popular uh, movement. They now have a big problem. We saw we saw what happened in uh, Lahai. This is the first time. Uh, uh, you know, uh, from the the, the the beginning of uh, the Zionist occupation, they they was uh, the uh, uh, they also uh, always talk about the genocide. Uh, uh, of uh, Jewish in uh, the Second War, but now what what happened? They are who do the genocide. This is very important now. The very important thing. They transform from the uh, 
وان هو از واز جينوسايد تو ذا وان هو ار ذا جينوسايدر ناو ذيس از فيري امبورتانت ثينج ناو ان ذيس وور مور اند مور بيبول نو ريلي اباوت ذا فلسطينيان ايشو ذير ار مور كلير اباوت ذا فلسطينيان ايشو For example, in the USA, more than 50% of the young of the, uh, the uh, people in the USA uh, are now with the Palestinian issue. Uh, uh, people now more conscious, more clear about the Palestinian issue. Uh, the media does not affect on, on, on the people uh, like before. Now they, they, they do uh, what they... Uh, Uh, really uh, are. Uh, this is very important for the Palestinian. For the first time, the Palestinian uh, issue or the Palestinian story are spread all in all the world. Uh, spread uh, in everyone. Uh, this is, uh, and we see that uh, the Biden or uh, the American administra- administration now uh, uh, affected from this from this uh, transformation in the uh, in the USA this is very important for our, for our uh, for our people all the Palestinian refugees here or in Gaza talk in this talk, talk about uh, this uh, position for the people inside the USA and inside the, all other the countries for example in Europe every week uh, like the New York or like the Washington There is a massive uh, demonstration. Uh, this is very important for us. This is uh, uh, a very important solidarity with the Palestinian people. This is uh, uh, if if and if something will affect on the Biden uh, administration, will be this uh, uh, massive demonstration in USA and in other countries. All right, we're going to leave it right there. We've been speaking with Haytham Abdo. Uh, Haytham, thank you so much for joining us. Again, uh, we wanted to hear your voice because, unfortunately, the United States government uh, has determined that resistance organizations, including PFLP, are, quote, terrorists. And as a consequence, there is almost an inability for the American people to hear your side, to hear what you're saying, to hear what you're thinking. And that's why I think this interview is so important. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for you.